topics. I want to talk about iodine, about uh, a gazillion years ago, animal life with spinal cords in the ocean developed metabolic hormones that were centered and built around the stable element of iodine. Iodine is in the ocean. It is scarce on the land. But all the regulatory hormones and the blood compounds were built around iodine. So when life finally comes to the land, it has an internal bloodstream, an ocean bloodstream. And the regulatory hormones are still centered on iodine. And the animal critters on the land are very iodine conservative, because there isn't much on the land. And they tend to <coughs> hang out along the coastline, but you can still get iodine from the plants of the animal life. You just look at the world, it's still along the coastlines. And it all goes well until the 1930s, 1940s, when some dumb scientists start splitting uranium and creating radioactive iodine. Then what happens is that the people who are deficient in iodine come across iodine that's in the food chain, it's in the air, it's in the water, it's being released by nuclear testing, nuclear reactors, and they take in radioactive iodine and it immediately goes to the thyroid. Now, radioactive iodine has a short half-life, eight days. That means in eight days it has given up half of its radioactive energy. There's a rule of thumb for figuring out how long it takes an isotope to decay back to normal. It is 10 times the half-life. So 10 times 8 days is 80 days. In 80 days, radioactive iodine has given up all of its radioactive energy. That means it's a very hot, fast-decaying isotope and if it happens to land in your thyroid, it can cause great damage. Or if it lands in your reproductive organs, that's another place iodine ends up. Or at the nipples. Women lactating. They have iodine. Yeah. So if, you're, if your thyroid gets burned out, then you've got a hypothyroid condition. That means your metabolism doesn't cook up and you feel cold, you've got dry skin, you know, it's hell. You tend to be overweight. We see a lot of obesity now. What has happened now is that 25% of the women in this country are presenting with subclinical symptoms of thyroid disorder. This is one of them. Many, many years ago, something went off. She wrote to me and she said, what do I do? Can I use seaweed? Will iodine help me? And I said, I don't prescribe. The FDA doesn't like it when I prescribe. And it's best I don't. But if you go to your doctor and he is willing to do an experiment, tell him. I went to my doctor and, uh, and they were open-minded to me um, continuing my synthroid, but to use bladder rack from him, and using bladder rack teas and, and cutting up the bladder rack and using it in my food. And they monitored me every month. First it was like every two weeks, and then every month for three months, they monitored my blood tests, just using bladder rack and off my Synthroid. And then I switched every six months, and now I haven't been on, and I was on Synthroid for 22 years. <laughs> and uh, now I haven't been on it, and I'm fine. And now they test me every year, so. Yeah. No, I guess I'm still on every six months. 
Um, did you develop thyroid antibodies during those years when you were on Synthroid? I still have half my thyroid. So I was minus half my thyroid because they took it out 24 years ago because they thought there was a tumor in it, which there wasn't. And um, substituted it with Synthroid. But. If you took the molecule that's called T4 hormone, thyroid hormone, cut it in half, you'd have the compound that's in bladder wrap. That's why it's a support for the thyroid. The thyroid says, hey, hey, you know. So if I get, and this has happened to me, I'll get somebody who's 85 years old who's repeated this story. And she said, Larch, my hands and feet are warm again. I'm cooking. That makes it worth it. My for me to go out and get cold freezing. once in a while. <laughs> my hands were freezing yeah. all the time. Yeah. How much bladder are you yeah. using? Uh, now I hardly use any of it. Now I just use the uh, soup mix because yeah. I have. It was during that thyroid support yeah. time when my thyroid had to pick up and start activate actively you know, working okay. again. And I was using. I would make the tea. Sometimes I would make it in canning jars, mm -hmm. and I would drink a whole jar a day. Mm -hmm. Half a jar after that, and then it would just sort of like. Um, How much flour did you put in the bottom? Ooh, I don't remember now. Handful. I think it was a handful. Mm -hmm. Did you put it in a pint or a quart jar? Quart. Well, there was a conference of thyroid researchers who came to my home. One of them was Ryan Drum, and he's a seaweed harvester, thyroid researcher. And we were talking about how much iodine does the average person need. And Ryan says, well, three to five grams dry weight per person per day. And that's like a three pound family pack of seaweed in a year. So Latterac is medicine. It's not daily food. It's medicine for people with a condition like yours. But if you just want iodine, at that rate of you know three to five grams of seaweed every day. That's what the cookbook is about. It's how do you integrate all the various seaweeds into daily food so it tastes good. So if you follow the recipe, you're covered. So what I did was I brought the cookbooks. Nina's professional photographer, all the food photos are hers. You should get hungry. And we put in some holiday recipes too that don't have seaweed in them, so she'll believe that I'm normal. <laughs> uh, and uh, no, they won't believe it, but it's okay, we'll try it anyway. And I brought a variety pack so that you'll have all the types, so that you can try out all the recipes. I didn't bring Bladderac because I'm not looking to prescribe like a doctor. You know, you can email me if you want Bladderac and I'll send it to you. But we brought food. That's it. And what we want to do is, you know, work with the gardeners and see your food improve. And pretty soon, you'll have garlic taking up iodine. It's one of the vegetables that will will take in iodine. And people who don't eat seaweed will be getting some iodine anyway. It's a little sneaky, but it works.